Thank you so much for joining us today for the last of our Global Running Day webinar sessions. I'm Varn Sriram with Generation UCAN and thrilled as always to be joined by Coach Greg McMillan. Hey Greg, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing fantastic and I really appreciate you joining us today. Bat and clean up for us, Greg, uh, capping off a wonderful day of Global Running Day webinar series. We've had Olympians Meb Kaplesky, Dathan Ritzenhain, coaches Pete Ray, Amy Bagley, uh, Don Grunigal, another professional runner, now yourself. Um, and we've really had a chance to hit on a variety of topics uh, related to running, but what we're specifically going to talk about uh, with you here today is something that's top of mind, or, or perhaps it's not top of mind, which we're about to find out for so many runners, which is injury prevention. Um, and Greg, it's something that you, uh, as a coach, have, have uh, really experienced tremendous success in terms of getting athletes running injury free and getting to the start line of races healthy. So I know it's a topic that, that is near and dear to your heart. Um, so with that, let's dive right in. Um, so Greg, you know, when runners are, are starting a plan, getting ready for a race, um, and they sign up with you to train for a race in, in your experience, how much are runners thinking about the work that's in front of them, what they have to do to get race ready versus actually getting to the starting line healthy? Well, I think they're only thinking about getting, you know, doing the work. I think they're they're thinking about the training plan. They're excited. They're goal oriented, so they want to do the work to achieve their goal, and that's really the focus. And the idea that, boy, I may have to massage this plan or change some things along the way so that I stay healthy. You know, our mantra is starting line healthy, finish line faster. So if you you've got to get to the starting line healthy with the work behind you. And so I think when a lot of runners are starting a plan, they're excited and they are looking forward to the work that they, they want to do. And they look at the workouts and are excited for those, or maybe nervous about some of them, but you know, knowing that that's going to help them be prepared for the race. But the idea that, boy, I could get hurt or I need to make sure I don't get hurt, that seems to not really play into the equation until it happens. And then there's a scram, a mad scramble to try to figure out what do I do now? So, you know, I think part of what you've really been working on getting runners to understand um, through McMillan running is, is not waiting for that crisis point, right? Like really addressing a lot of these, these strategies and, and really approaching getting injured from a preventative approach instead of it happened what now? Um, can you share just what your overall philosophy is when it comes to how runners should think about, um, you know, preventing injuries? Yeah, we kind of have three strategies that we use that has significantly lowered the injury rate. You know, the injury rate in running is astronomical, 60 to 80 percent, depending on the research survey you look at, of runners every year get injured to the point that it interrupts their training significantly. And that's that's insane. <laughs> that basically means almost all runners are having an injury. We've been working really for the last three years to, uh, our injury rate was already pretty low, but we've really made a conscious effort of like, can we get this as close to zero as possible? We really want to get that rate way down. And we've been able to do it from that 60 to 80 percent that the you know, normal population of runners experiences we've gotten ours down to 9%. So I'm really excited that we've been able to keep people running. If they can keep training, then they can get fitter and then they have a better chance of success. So it's really been uh, a primary focus for us. And I'll tell you kind of the secrets, if you will, there's really three things that I think runners have to look at. The first is they have to get on a smarter training plan. And that involves a smart training plan. There's sort of three components to it. There's there's daily wiggle room is what I call it. And that means that on a daily basis, whatever your plan is, it should have a range of running. It shouldn't be just one number. So for example, if your training plan says go run five miles, well, five miles when you're feeling great is not a, that big of a stress to you. But five miles if you're really tired because your kid was sick up all night and then you had a hard work day and you're not feeling great, then that five miles is really challenging. So I think smarter training plans have a range. All of my plans have a range for every day. So if you're feeling great, do the upper end of the range. If you're feeling kind of normal, do the middle end of the range. And if you're not feeling good, do the lower end. As a coach, I know that that's going to be just the same stress, even though you're doing a little bit less. And that's a great way for athletes to be able to modify their training on a daily basis based on how they're feeling. 
That way they don't get into those situations where they're forcing something and then later they're going to pay for maybe forcing too much training. So that's kind of one component of that smarter uh, training plan. And it also empowers the runner to feel like they can modify their plan. Because you know us runners, we're kind of crazy. We, we're goal driven. We, if it's on the page, we're going to do it. So if you give them a range, then they're like, okay, as long as I'm in the range, I'm doing the plan. As opposed to, oh, I was supposed to do five miles and I could only do four because I was super tired. Oh, I'm failing at the plan. That's not the case. That's pretty fascinating, Greg. And, and you know, right off the top, you mentioned this and, and you just said it again that with so many runners being goal and goal oriented people, you know, kind of seeing something on the page and then feeling like you can't do it, you know, maybe runners wouldn't normally allow themselves to do that. If it's on the paper, I got to do it. So is this um, idea of wiggle room something that you kind of developed um, over time as, as you were coaching more athletes and, and this was something that you kind of understood athletes needed or is this something that you had kind of believed in from the very start, maybe based on your own experience? Well, working with so many athletes, you start to realize that, you know, and when you work with them closely, like I have, I mean, I've worked with, you know, beginning runners in marathon charity programs up to Olympic athletes and that sort of situation. And so you're really attuned to, wow, I need to have a range for these athletes so that they, you know, because a lot of great coaches, when they're watching an athlete workout, they'll stop them early. And that's mm. because the coaches recognize that athlete has gotten all the stimulus they need for that day. We're good. But the athlete, if they just see it on the paper, then they may, you know, want to force it. So I think this idea of being able to modify based on how the athlete is feeling is, is really critical. And I, I think that's, and that's certainly that's why in all my plans, you'll see a range for every day so that the athlete does feel empowered. I can adjust this based on how I'm feeling. So that's a really, I think, key component to that situation. And the second component of, I think, a smart training plan is having wiggle room in your week so that you've got options of, I can move things around. I can spread the stress, if you will. So if I'm feeling tired, bump a workout another day or change the workout so that it is a little less stressful because your life stress is greater. So having wiggle room where you've got some options for, you know, cross training days, recovery days, workout days that can be shifted around, having that ability to move because most of us, our weeks hardly ever turn out the way we think they're going to when you sit down on Sunday or Monday and you're like, this is how my week's going to go. Almost always work gets in the way, family gets in the way, stuff changes and so you've got to have that wiggle room. That again empowers the athlete to be very attuned to their body. So if you think about all the great coaches always say, listen to your, your body, listen to your body. That's what they're talking about is, hey, let's shift things. Let's move things around. So I think smart programs have that. That's why, again, I've included lots of those options of, hey, this is a great day to go for an easy run. But if you're tired, why don't you do some cross training? Or if you're really tired, just take the day off. So it gives the athlete a little bit of ownership. Again, and we were talking about this before, instead of the, the athlete being forced into the plan, it, the plan should be modified for the athlete. It should work with the athlete, not against the athlete. So that's another one of those key parts of a smart training plan. So when we're talking about wiggle room, um, and you know, perhaps it might be different for different distances, but, but getting back to say like both the daily and the weekly wiggle room, um, in a marathon plan, for example, what are we talking about in terms of mileage, say in terms of variance on a day before the I'm feeling great versus the I'm really not feeling it today. And then same in a week, you know, what is kind of when you think about wiggle room, how much of a variance are we talking about in terms of the high end versus the low end, both from a daily standpoint and from a weekly standpoint? Well, it could be a lot, right? So again, going back to that, hey, you're the, in my, as a coach, I'm thinking, boy, five miles would be great for this athlete on a regular day. But if they felt great, maybe they would run six miles. If they didn't feel good, maybe it's four. So maybe the range is four to six miles, or it might be 30 to 40 minute runs, something like that, uh, if you're time-based, which I do a lot of time-based training. Uh, again, so the athlete can adjust based on how they're feeling. And for the week, it can really vary because if they're really tired, then maybe they've got uh, an, an extra day off and you start doing an extra day off and then you're running the low end of the ranges. Well, you can have a reduction in training volume, but I don't care necessarily if it keeps them healthy. I know I'd rather have a 20% lower volume during that week where you're at risk for injury 
but you can keep training as opposing as opposed to oh I'm worried that I've got to hit this exact mileage level or I won't achieve my goal I'm a little bit more like let's stay healthy and choose our battles really choose those weeks when you feel great yeah you'll get some more mileage in when you don't then maybe it's a little bit less and that really leads to the third component of a smarter training plan which is this idea of down weeks so in the plans that I write and I think this is not uncommon uh, that coaches write plans where every usually every fourth week there is a reduction in training load usually could be 15 to 30 percent reduction in training volume again just to allow the musculoskeletal system to recover because one of the things that runners often don't understand particularly newer runners is that the cardiovascular system and the mental system are sort of your gauge of effort that adapts very fast to training that's why pretty soon while you struggled to run for 20 minutes now you go by 20 minutes talking to your training partner it's no problem right so that system is very fast the head and the heart are very fast at adapting and those don't get injured what gets injured is the musculoskeletal system the muscles the tendons bones ligaments and fascia and that's the system that really should be the gauge we use for training and so when you do these down weeks and if you're really injured frequently then maybe it's every second or third week is a down week and then more, most people get by with every fourth week being this reduction in training again could be 10 percent reduction could be 30 percent reduction depending on your injury rate and whatever and again you can you can take that reduction as oh I'm just gonna run less each time I run or you can say oh I'm just gonna have an extra day off people play around and see what works for them but that little rest that little break on kinda hammering the musculoskeletal system really helps it recover it helps it rejuvenate and so if you combine this like daily I can modify based on how I'm feeling weekly I can modify based on how I'm feeling and then I'm gonna preemptively so you do this ahead of time right within the program it's already pre-planned pre I'm gonna have these reductions in these the volume now suddenly the musculoskeletal system never kinda gets in the injury cycle you know it never starts like because runners are all this way right oh I felt it I felt it a little bit more I'll ignore it I feel it I look and then they keep going and then suddenly well I guess I better go see somebody yeah. we're trying to avoid that cycle right no no question I think yeah exactly right it's it's like you can keep it's something you can keep running on until ultimately you can't run on it anymore and yeah. um, it's, we see that so much you know it's like I mean I'm even just being at expos and talking to you know hundreds of runners um, I mean you always have so many people coming up to you saying oh I, I you know I got injured this cycle I signed up but I can't do it and it, it can be you know very demoralizing and disappointing um, so you know Greg with kind of the three strategies that you've outlined um, thus far you know these are very much kind of centered around I guess the runner understanding it's okay to back off listen to your body um, and and then also kind of internalizing the idea that you know it's better to, to shorten a workout have that wiggle room uh, versus trying to push yourself and nail every workout so outside of this now are there certain things that you also from a preventative standpoint um, suggest that runners do both pre and post run so they're feeling good they're able to execute you know their training but you still have some things that you say if you do this you know the injury has a better chance of not coming absolutely so we've kind of addressed it preemptively as you say with the training plan so we've got a smarter training plan that's got the wiggle room in it so that you never kind of get into that fatigue cycle that leads to an injury and then there's two other components to that we've really been successful with in reducing the injury rate uh, and one is that you've got issues with your tissues that's part of training is that it's your musculoskeletal system those tissues are the things that gets disrupted and what happens of course is they get disrupted that leads to dysfunctional movement that means something is trying to do work that it's not prepared to do and so then you get an injury so you have to take care of your tissues before and after each run we've got a what we call our three hab program so it's three movements that you should do before your runs and we take it from you know head to toe and back again to teach runners hey here are little things that you can do spend two or three minutes being more prepared for the run that preps your tissues for the activity that you're going to do 
And then afterward, and this is where I think we've made a huge difference in running injuries, afterward, those tissues, because one of the things that's interesting about running is the tissues want to stiffen. They want to get more like a spring, and that's a benefit as a runner, right? Because then you've got more sort of of this energy being returned just by the nature of the tissues being stiff as opposed to you having to muscularly drive yourself. So that's a positive, but sometimes in certain areas of the body, that stiffening gets too much, and so we need to help loosen it. So you've got to relax the muscle tissue itself, and then you also have to relax the nervous system because anybody that's done a heart, and I did a speed workout this morning, so my muscles are definitely, the nerves are, you know, they're pretty fired up to hold that tissue because they've had to turn on, off, on, off, on, off very quickly. So you have to do exercises in active isolated flexibility or the rope stretching, or you can Google that, and obviously there's lots of things. That helps re relax that nervous system so it's not holding on so tight. And then the muscles, it moves them through a range of motion and it shows the muscle, okay, I can relax. Those tissues can relax. They, can no, they won't be bound up and move toward that dysfunctional movement pattern that leads to injury. So we do a lot of work after. So the solution, you know, is really mobility work. And afterwards, you can do a ton of mobility work. But you can prioritize it because obviously people look at programs and go, well, I can't do 40 minutes of you know, stretching exercises afterwards, I say, no, it's okay. We just need to do mobility work. Figure out where your weak links are. Where the, because there's a lot of running injuries, but you probably only have a few areas that often get injured. You've got your weak link. Focus on that. So for me, for example, my calves are my weak link. My Achilles is my Achilles. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's my problem. My Achilles heel is my Achilles heel. So after everyone, I have to do the active isolated flexibility, at least on my calves. I have to do that. And then if I have time, I can move to other areas of my body. So it doesn't have to be overwhelming, but if you do it religiously, because you know that's the part of my body that's going to get injured, then you can really keep that part of your body happy and healthy. So I think this idea of mobilization a little bit before, but particularly after, can make a big difference. And I, that's included in my training plans. That's why I put these prehab programs in there. It's like, okay, I want you to be doing these things that I know can help you stay injury free. And the next thing is being stronger, being more prepared to do the running itself. So we call that prehab training. And that's core, strength work, balance work, dynamic training, all of these things that make you more prepared to handle the act of running because running is stressful. You're landing with two to three times your body weight every step. You take on average 1,500 steps per mile. Do the math. That's a lot of work on the body. So you need to be strong enough to hold it in the correct position so that it can work through the correct gait cycle without dysfunction. And again, the tissues being happy, that means they can do that. You combine that, so those are my three, essentially. A smarter training plan, it's got the wiggle room, so you feel empowered to listen to your body. Doing the mobilization work, pre and post, particularly post, religiously, on the areas that you have issues with. And then just doing the work you know you should do. That's core and strength work and uh, balance and uh, dynamic development and and again that's why I include all that in the training plans is I want you to be doing it it doesn't have to be overwhelming but if you do a little bit over time you can stave off injuries and the combination of that I think is the reason we've seen such a reduction in injuries with the athletes we've worked with there's no guarantee obviously these things happen uh, it'd be probably impossible to get to zero maybe, but yeah. I just feel so good that instead of six or eight out of 10 runners is having an issue, we're down to less than one uh, through a training cycle. And that allows an athlete to get fitter, but also stay motivated. They're so excited. You take these down weeks and you're recovered and you're excited for the next session of training and that improves the quality then you go to the race, you've got a fit athlete that's super motivated and they're healthy. That's why we get such great results, I think, because, because of that.
Yeah, that I mean those those numbers that you shared. I mean though that's 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 amazing. I mean that that's a stark contrast when you talk about sixty to eighty percent of runners getting injured versus one in ten runners that you see um, after going through your program. And, and if some one of the things you've mentioned, Greg, kind of the way you've talked about this a, a few different times is is I guess you're not really looking at the preventative stuff as supplemental to your training. You actually build it into your programs, like you've said, and and, and look at it as part of training. So I just wanted to ask you about sort of that mental approach. How do you feel that that helps runners when they don't consider some of these techniques like kind of something outside of their training, but they actually internalize it as like, hey, this is just as much as part of the training as, you know, the 14 mile long run or whatever it might be. I think it's helpful when the coach is saying, you got to do this. <laughs> you know, that certainly makes it easier for the athlete to, to do it. But it's also, and you mentioned it earlier, it's preemptive. We're trying to avoid the situation where you're four, six, eight weeks into your training plan for your big race. Suddenly you've ignored something that's been bugging you, and now you're scrambling to find a therapist to work on you who understands runners and then how are you going to modify the training and you end up limping to the starting line. So we kind of start at the outset with, okay, we've designed the programs. We've got different level programs, you know, for each athlete, depending on, you know, there's like a little plan picker that I have that a recommendation tool that says, answer these questions. It'll tell you the right level of plan for you. But we've started out with saying, we're going to take these down weeks. You've got the authority from me that you can modify the weeks. And hey, remember, you need to be doing your core today. You need to do this strength workout today. You know, giving them options like that. So it's right front and center. Nothing, you know, it's not crazy extensive. You don't have to quit your job to be a runner. <laughs> you can fit it in. But it's a little bit. I just think a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. And over time, you do it for a year. Do it for two years. Now you've built yourself into a really injury proof, like a bulletproof runner can happen for everybody pretty quickly. And if, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the injury rate has always been high at runners, even though we've had these really incredible changes in footwear, right? From the stuff they ran in in the 1960s yeah. all the way through the 80s and 90s. And then we just had this whole different change in technology and running that came recently. We had lots of talk about form and all of that, the injury rate stays the same. So it's clear, it's not a, it's not necessarily a, a footwear is not the solution to the problem. There's been lots of changes in footwear, orthotics, form, all of that, when it's the injury rate. So I, I think it does come down to the training plan and the athlete taking care of themselves and being more prepared for the training. So I kind of have that viewpoint of like, You're going to. Oh, lost you there for a moment. You're back. So, um, go ahead, Greg. You oh, were saying you, you have that viewpoint. That. No, you're all good. So, you were starting to say you have that viewpoint, um, and then we lost you. But go ahead. That's our viewpoint coming out is that we're going to keep you healthy. We're going to do this in a smart way. I know the workouts that you need to do to build the fitness. We just need to get those workouts in. and we got to take care of ourselves along the path so we can get those in. And we'll be open to changing based on how your life goes and how you respond and adapt to the training. I feel like that's the component that's really uh, helping athletes stay. And, and you see a lot of athletes doing way more non-running training now. You see a lot. I mean, Mev's a perfect example, right? He's always doing his active isolated flexibility. So he's doing his running drills. He's doing all that stuff. And, you know, Greg, in the few minutes we have, you, you, you took me in, in the direction. I just had a couple follow-ups on some of what you said. But one of the specific things I wanted to ask you about was kind of this non-running type of training. Um, intuitively, you know, to me, it would seem like maybe that, and maybe it's changing now, but initially it might be the high, hardest thing to get runners to buy into because everyone's just trying to think of, I want to run. That's what's going to make me faster. That's what's going to make me have better stamina and endurance. Um, is that is my intuition is that correct is is that the toughest yeah. thing to get runners to buy into the importance of yes and that's why we started that three head program i said okay if you just want to run but you're tired of getting hurt at least do the three head program it's just three movements 
you can do that. You can fit that in. Let's start there and try to establish a, establish a routine because really you need to make your non or your injury proofing part of running of your running be um, you know a routine so that you get it in because you do a little bit and I guarantee you every runner when they're hurt would easily go back and say I would gladly do that every day I would do exactly what you said when they get injured so let's let's stop that um, injury cycle let's start it uh, in a way that says okay we're gonna train smart we're gonna listen to our body we're gonna take care of our body and we're gonna build a more injury proof body because that not only will help us in the current training cycle, but it makes it gives us a lifelong, you know, a, a long life of running, which I think is what all of us ultimately want. I don't know if there's any kind of simple way to boil this down, but you know, sort of out of the three strategies that that you've described to us, you know, the first one being the building in the wiggle room, the second one being uh, what you can do both pre and post run, and then the third one being, you know, what other things you can incorporate into your training, um, you know, what other types of, of exercise and, and workouts. Um, would you say any one of the three is the most responsible for the injury rate from your view? Is, is there sort of like one major or, or is it really the combination of the three that are all feeding into each other? It's hard to tease it out for sure, but at minimum, I think if you train smarter, you would help yourself because you would stop the cycle You've got to interrupt the cycle, right? The tissue's getting upset. You keep training on it. You never give it a break. Eventually, it breaks down, and you've got an injury. So at least if you can stall that, if you can break that cycle, and you never get so far down it, I think that's, that's really helpful. But I will say, if you want to be a healthy runner and have a long uh, sort of running career, then you need to start doing just a few things, whatever it is. Like I said, I just committed to my calves. I've got to do my calves every time, and that's been really helpful in keeping them happy. Uh, one, one last one for you, Greg, before we wrap this up. Um, so this is taking it slightly in a different direction, but, um, you know, so obviously injuries happen. People can do everything right, but like you said, you know, we can't control everything, and injuries still may happen. Um, what advice do you give to athletes when they do get injured just in terms um, of, allowing the body to actually heal, not coming back too soon, not making it worse. I mean, I know today's discussion is about injury prevention, so we'll just spend a minute or two on this. But when an athlete does get hurt, how do you approach that as a coach? Well, first, they've got to find a good therapist, and they should always have a good therapist. You should always have a good running therapist available, right? Because, the you know, somebody putting their hands on you is very helpful in this injury preventing process for sure but they've got to get to somebody who can understand what's going on and give us an idea of what we can be doing because there's you know there's some cases where you shouldn't do any exercise you should rest you really need to do that there's a lot of times where you should be doing something that we need want to enhance blood flow but maybe we just can't tolerate running so in that case we'd be looking for something that's maybe not weight bearing and maybe not like running but has a great fitness component so swimming or cycling but then there's other cases where hey you're not far off we just need to lessen the musculoskeletal stress so that we can move to things like the elliptical or the alter g or elliptigo or any of those sort of things that mimic running weight bearing but not the same amount of stress so we need to learn from the therapist where are we and you know based on that athlete and from that we can make a plan on how to adjust the program and then you just got to accept it you have to say this is where I am I can build from here again Meb's perfect example right he's always been able to work through his injury issues he's always kept the faith that if he just you know did the work stayed fit the running would happen again and everybody who's been injured typically has gotten over it and so it will happen so we just need to uh, learn from the therapist, let them guide us a little bit as to which of those approaches we need to take. That's fantastic, Greg. It's some great, great info. Um, I think people can take away a lot of specific things that they could uh, should um, you know consider and, and implement, but also kind of just helpful to, to get the big picture perspective on, on how people should view all of this as well. Um, so I know you mentioned that the, the injury prevention is part of your training plans, and, and you have a ton of training plans available for folks of all different distances and, and really customizable for uh, different levels of running. I know you've been working with us to put together a plan for one of our UCAN employees who's trying to run his first marathon. Um, so 
how can folks get um, you know access to the McMillan training plans um, with the injury uh, prevention component being part of this? Super easy. Just go to McMillanRunning.com. That's my website. Uh, there's a McMillan running calculator, which a lot of people use. And as part of using that calculator, it will give you a training plan recommendation. And then you can view that plan. You can preview it. You can see other plans that might work as well. And I've got a whole library of plans uh, to help athletes, uh, four different levels for each different distance. And you can kind of go through the training plan selection process. It helps drill down exactly the best plan that would work for you. And then in that plan, you'll see it'll have here, go watch this video. This is the prehab routine I want you to do today or that sort of thing. So it's, it's a really great setup. I think we just released those um, a few months ago so that we released the full library of all the stuff I've been doing for all these years with these personal co coaching clients that have had such a low injury rate. So I'm excited that more people can kind of use the system and uh, hopefully have the same great results. So it's pretty easy. Um, just built all that functionality. Just answer those questions and it'll tell you this is the plan I think is for you. And if you have a question, my email's right on the website. So you can just email me and I'm happy to try to help uh, guide you in the right direction. Well, that's awesome. And then, you know, Greg, like you mentioned with the video content, I think that's a, a tremendously valuable resource for folks to even understand some of the specific movements and exercises they should be doing. So like Greg mentioned, that's all built it right into the plan. Um, Greg, really want to thank you for your time. A really interesting discussion, really great information from you as always. Um, so just really appreciate you uh, sharing this with us because as you know better than, than I do, but, but like as I mentioned, as I see all the time, we go to these events and half the people you talk to are speaking about an injury they're just getting over or telling you about something that just started to hurt. So it's so, so, you know, top of mind for virtually every runner out there. Um, so really and great to get some strategies. Coach, I'm sorry, for me as a coach, it's so stressful. It's so disheartening yeah. to have somebody who's doing all this hard work. They've changed their life. They're able to do things that they, they couldn't do before. And then it gets cut short with an injury. I, it's just so terrible. And so I'm, I'm really, I think all of us in the coaching field, we're working hard to like, we're going to change this. We're going to make it better for the athletes so they don't have to endure that. Yeah. And then that's not even to get into, you know, the, the money that people are spending on signing up for these races and getting <laughs> right. there. Right. So yeah, disheartening in all yeah. sorts of ways. Um, well, anyways, just wanted to thank uh, you so much, Greg. And, and, Thanks to all of our guests today. Really had a tremendous lineup of, of webinars for Global Running Day. So for all of you that have tuned in, for all of you that signed up, um, stay tuned. You will be getting recordings of all four sessions, including this one by email, um, in just a little bit. So with that, we will be signing off for the day. I'm Varun Sriram. And Greg, thanks again. Really appreciate you being part of this and look forward to having you on again soon. Thanks. Great to see you as always. Take care.